It's a labyrinth of waterways stretching over 450 kilometers. We begin our meander through the rich marshland of the Marie Poitevin from the pier in the village of Le Mazeau. At the helm of our punt is Jeremy, a boatman who helps look after this natural wilderness right through the year. This is a habitat that, right from the outset, was carved out by man. We've broken with the natural cycle of this marshland by landscaping it. When the area is no longer flooded and its waterways can be sailed again, Jeremy turns his hand to being a tour guide. With the help of his long stick of wood known as a pigouille, he pushes his way through these streams in search of their inhabitants. This is a couple who are often present in this part of the marsh. The swans here don't like being disturbed. While the mother carefully sits on her eggs, her mate comes to shoo us away. They're used to seeing us, but each time they make it clear that it's their home. Along the banks are rows of these ash pollard trees. They're regularly cut back to limit the damage caused by the many beavers in the area. Another unusual speciality here is fire, which is found even on the water. This is a phenomenon which is caused by the decomposition of organic matter, mainly that of leaves. When they fall to the bottom of the riverbed, they rot, ferment and create gas. That gas is methane. We draw it back up to the surface and ignite it to spark a fire. It's the marshland's little magic trick. <laughs> Some 50 kilometers further on, Ug is preparing to settle into his hideout and pull out his binoculars. The birds that live in these marshes are hunted for more than five months of the year, so they're naturally very shy. The aim of the game in order to see these migratory birds is to move in a very hidden way. This is the observatory at Saint-Denis-du-Péret. The landscape has changed somewhat now that we're in the more dried out part of the marshes. It's a nature reserve that's particularly popular with migratory birds. This is a relatively quiet period. We're at the height of the breeding season. The birds are hiding to build their nests and the bulk of the rest have flown back to Northern Europe. 80 couples of storks also spend their summers here. They discovered this nesting ground some 40 years ago. There are many species that are in a poor state of conservation. These ones can handle it well. They benefit from the natural imbalance here because they feed largely on crayfish from Louisiana that invade the water system of the Poitevin marshes. Also grazing on this reserve are cows, which are fantastic natural lawnmowers. Back in the heart of the marshes, it's a big day for this herd, belonging to Dominique and Guillaume. Do they get stressed or not? Oh yes, the boat rocks around a bit and they're used to walking on firmer ground. Like every year, several locals have come out to enjoy the show, as the cows are put out to pasture, rather unusually, by boat. It's the growth of the grass that tells us when to put the cows to pasture. The herd will spend six months out here in the open air. These cows are a local breed. They're really part and parcel of this marshland. The cattle are now well used to this environment and aren't afraid of the water. A cow can swim very well. We once had a bull that would visit all the cows in the area. He was really smart. <laughs> he went slowly, he walked down into the water and swam off. He'd go up and see the neighbors and then come back. It was just the neighbor that wasn't too happy. <laughs> the last leg of our trip takes us to the coast. This is the Aiguillon Peninsula. It's the coastal tip of the Poitevin Marsh. It's where the Sèvres-Niortes River flows out into the ocean. Sébastien Pallier works as a local fishing instructor. So now you throw back the rod and you let go of the line when you reach this point. Today he's giving two friends their first lesson in surf casting throwing the fishing line in from the beach. You find more typical sea fish like bass, bream, but also fish like eels, which swim by here on their way back downstream to the Poitevin marshes. The eels that can be caught here are a speciality of local chef Frédéric. Hi, Daniel. Have you got some eels for me? This morning, he's dropped in to visit his supplier. This is wonderful. They're perfect for making a fricassé. They're great. Give me five kilos of them. In the kitchen of his restaurant in the town of Maron, Frédéric prepares this regional delight. 
It's inspiring, no? Straight away I'm inspired. I'm going to get busy in the kitchen right away. His signature dish is eel in parsley and garlic. I start with some salted butter. I always use this. Then the persillade. As the name suggests, it's a mix of parsley and garlic. The cooking of the fish takes just a few minutes. You need to hear them sing. OK, gentlemen, here are some eels I've prepared for you to taste. It's a dish that's usually eaten with your fingers. Normally, you just take it like this. And once again, Frédéric's eels have delighted his guests with their unique taste of the Marais Poitevin.